How do you think people would have described you like back then in high school? Annoying. Really? <laughs> <laughs> my dad is like, <laughs> like rhythm death, like he can't keep a beat is what my mom has said. I had like started sunburn because I was just like fed up with like the other like the other brands I had. I could just see myself spray painting the wall in yeah, my apartment that'd or be like so cool. the fumes or like uh, like it would be tight to like make a stencil or yeah. you know like stuff like that. The yeah. <laughs> Hi, today I'm here with Sunburn. How's it going? <laughs> so you were actually born in LA, right? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Manhattan Beach on the west side and moved to downtown like maybe eight years ago. Yeah. Were your were your parents like? Do they grew up here? Grow up here as well? Yeah, they grew up here as well. Um, actually, in Torrance, they were next door neighbors. Oh. So my grandmas live next to each other, yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's so sweet. Yeah, right? And like the same house too as like track homes from like Damn. the 40s. And what were you like, like growing up? What were you into? <laughs> um, I was really into like punk music. I was like a little surfer kid. Um, yeah. I liked that whole scene. Um, I liked skating a lot. I still like skating a lot. I really liked skating and surfing and that whole thing. <laughs> and getting hurt a lot. And then also shoot. I got. I was in film a lot and like making movies. Yeah, you studied younger. that. But we'll get back. We'll get into yeah. that later. <laughs> how would? How do you think people would have described you like back then in high school? Annoying. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was like just a kid. Just I like to goof around and like play plank, play pranks and shit like that. So you're kind of like the class clown. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> I'm always kind of like <laughs> pranking people and my friends. <laughs> What kind of music did your parents play when you were growing up? Loads of like classic rock. Oh wow. There's so much Queen yeah. when I was with my mom. And then my dad got me really into like Led Zeppelin. And yeah, there wasn't a lot of a lot of jazz too. Like Herbie Hancock, like lots of that. Um I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, just so much rock, because then that was like my dad's favorite and just kept on going. Yeah. And, yeah. So like, I still love classic rock. I guess they were always supportive of you in bands, right? Because you were in a few bands. Yeah, I was like, school. yeah, really like metal. Um, and we would always have practice at my house. My mom was just all about like creating just a creative environment. And we had like the garage, which was like a recording studio, yeah. but then also like a hangout area. And then we had drum sets and like so many guitar amps and stuff like that. Do you remember what's your first band name? <sighs> I don't know if I remember my first band name. I'm trying to think. It had to be when I was like in eighth grade. Uh, How about like the first um, band that you actually like put stuff out? Fallen, fallen figure, fallen figure. I want to say. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> how, <laughs> how many people stupid. were you? How many? I think four p. A four piece. Uh -huh. And I played drums. I had like a double pedal and. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did your parents get you into instruments? Yeah, you? they. Um, they kind of forced all of it on me when I was young. So I had to do piano, and then uh, I was in jazz. Like I did jazz trumpet for as long as I, like, <laughs> I could get away with it. And yeah. so I was like, like, high school, and I was like, Mom, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and then um, we always had a guitar, so I always like, I don't know how to play guitar. What kind of careers are they in? Uh, my dad's actually in, uh, in IT. He works for Gap, and then uh, oh, wow. my mom is a stay-at-home mom. Was yeah. she always or no? She was actually in a, she was actually in like, like computer science and like worked for, worked for like Boeing. What? That's yeah. crazy. And then she's like, I want to be a mom. <laughs> and then she also yeah. like was a teacher after that. She she's a sweetheart. Oh. Yeah. Did did they push you academically? Yeah, but not too hard because I always like I had never really liked academics. I never really got it. I like I was more of a creative type, so they kind of learn to accept that and yeah. uh, then help push me and down this direction yeah. do they play instruments themselves my mom does but my dad does. my dad is like like rhythm deaf like <laughs> he can't keep a beat is what my mom has said but my mom my mom has a piano my mom has a guitar she yeah she's just so she's yeah, yeah. she's the, she's where i get a lot of the music from yeah, it's just, she's kind of like the musician in her family. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have other relatives that are also really musical? Yeah, like the whole, the, my whole mom's side of the family, yeah. and then even my dad's side of the family. We had professional trumpet players, and then, yeah, like, so it comes from both sides. 
Can you describe the house that you grew up in? What was it like? So it's kind of similar to like where we are now. Uh, it's kind of close to the beach. Big two-story house. Yeah. Um, swing in the front. Uh, big tree in the front, and then big backyard. Lots of little dogs running around. Oh. We had we had little we had lots of pugs when we were growing up. So I still love pugs. My sister has a lot of them still. How did you get from going, like, being in the band phase to more of, like, the producing phase? Um, so, like, my uncle, my uncle was into, uh, like, the recording arts, kind of, like, you know, that whole aspect. And I really, really liked that. So I was recording more and more and more, and he was showing me stuff. Holy shit. That's the biggest <laughs> beetle I've ever seen. Oh, my God. That was so yeah, right? Cool. So <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> uh, so I really got into like the recording aspect of it and was like recording in the garage. And once I got to college, um, one of my roommates was showing me like reason and how you could like really in depth like make music um, on the computer. And then that's where it kind of just all spanned out of control. And I was like, oh my God. And that's when dance music was like really having its, you know, big explosion um yeah you went to a bunch of like raves right yeah like that was like right around like 2007 2008 like hard right when they had their first one like it was just like unbelievable and i was like fell in love with the music and kind of just all went from there do you do you remember the first one you went to how old were you um it was together as one like going into 2007 so i was probably 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that early stages of rave really changed how you like produce now? Uh, yeah, and yes and no. I mean, the music has changed so much, but there's like such an appreciation now of everything and kind of where the whole scene and everything's kind of come. And mm -hmm. I like I, I, there's like just this glorious time of it was like so new and like like electro house and stuff were just so big and. It was just exciting that now it kind of just spawned all these new subgenres. Yeah. yeah. How do you decide to study like film cinematography then? Because uh, like I, I'm still a huge nerd, so I, that the whole aspect of like making movies and like editing and that whole, you know, that whole aspect is very similar to like music production. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're on a linear based program and you're slicing stuff and editing and going through all of this and kind of just making this masterpiece on the computer. And I just love the aspect of that. So how did you? So when you were still in high school, you were like always doing films and stuff. Yeah, with your I was friends? just like yeah, always shooting. I had like a mini DV camera and like Final Cut, and like would just go at it and just make all these little stupid movies and. What kind of stuff is it like skits or like? Well, I like really got into actually making like because like my my friend's dad was a producer oh, wow. at Fox, so I got to be like a grip, uh, like one summer for. Uh, for the show House, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I want to like, take it more seriously. So then I started doing like more kind of independent films and mm -hmm. like more serious stuff for a little bit. But um, then that kind of like fizzled out towards college. And then like, I realized I didn't really like the whole culture and I kind of just liked music because I could do what I wanted to do. And well, like yeah. film, you kind of had to like do what the whole group wanted to do and never really worked out for me. Was there like a specific turning point or something that you like struggled with that you like? Yeah, I mean like, it was like probably when I was like 19. It was just like, I wasn't getting along with the whole, everybody in the, like, the department. Um, and just like the whole vibe was not what I was liking. And I was like, I remember calling my mom like, shit, I fucking hate this, I wanna leave. Like, mm -hmm. and it just kind of killed what I loved about it. And then that's when I started to really just like discover discover bleh, discover film <laughs> uh, or sorry music yeah. and that's when things kind of just turned around and I started pursuing that and going to school for that. Did you ever think of doing film like a film as your own company so you wouldn't have to work with people? Yeah, but like at the time it was so. I mean, I was so young and didn't know how to like you know do it, and I needed so much like training and like you needed like. Like, it's hard to do it by yourself, you know? Right, yeah. Um, and even, like, when I was, like, younger, I would, like, shoot for, like, like skateboard companies like Chocolate and stuff like that. But it was always, like, their kind of vision, you know? Mm. But, like, it was fun to hang with them and shoot. You know what I mean? I like to, like, film. 
but it, it was hard to kind of find my way in that whole industry. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I kind of like to do a little bit of everything. When you started getting really into music, was that um, like turning into a career, was that during college or like after you graduated? Uh, I was like right in the middle, like right, cause like I switched, um, I switched majors. Oh. And I was like, okay. So I audio wanna... engineering or yeah. yeah. And then even after that, I was like, okay, what the hell do I do with this? Like, I don't want to work on the same thing. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to work on other people's music. I don't want to record other people. I want to record my stuff. But it really helped um, kind of like pave the way into like what I want to do and having the, uh, the tools necessary to like excel quickly on these like new programs and stuff mm -hmm. like that when I kind of made the full switch. Do you think you could get to where you are now without studying that? Um, probably not. I mean, hmm. like, those things uh, were really crucial in kind of teaching me all, like, very important aspects of, like, how to make music, how to do it, like, how to do, like, the mastering engineering side, how to record vocals, how to do all these things that are, like, really crucial with my sound today. And, like, what really helped me in, like, like the early stages was having that upper hand and, like, like being able to make my music sound just as good comparable to like professional stuff on like major labels and like having the vocal recording sound great you know what would you say would be like um the point where you realize that this is like a full-on career that you could just put your whole life into it um it was so i had done like multiple aliases and i had like started sunburn because i was just like fed up with like the other like the other brands I had. Oh, what type of music were those? It was like harder, like electro, electro house kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't like, I was like, it was getting, the whole kind of like scene and that whole sound, the big room was just getting so oversaturated and yeah. all like overdone. That's like, what's new? What's next? And um, Sunburn just came out and I was like, wow, this is like really, <laughs> this is working out really yeah. well. Was it like you made like a lot of those type of tracks and you realized it didn't fit and then you I, rebranded or how did it all come together? So I had done a couple of those tracks and just kind of sat on them for a year or put, a, put one of them out and it was just like right at the correct time, like early 2014 when that sound and like disclosure was like really big and it just kind of all, all the pieces came together and I was like wow like I, I, I created something unique and I like doing it so then I kind of just went all in and one day I had an agent and one day I had a manager and then like, <laughs> and then one day I'm here, yeah. you know, like, so it all kind of just like fell together slowly, but that all the pieces kind of just aligned and it worked out really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would you say that like the sunburn type of tracks have changed since like now compared to like the first ones you put out? It, it's really, it's, it's because, it's be <laughs> 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 they really, <laughs> <laughs> they really like uh I guess matured um mm -hmm. and become more songs. I did a lot of remixes and stuff like that. Um but then it was like really learning how to like create a song with somebody and sitting down with writers and vocalists and just making something like you know very unique and this 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 like special original mm -hmm. I think the original content is what's really developed a lot. Yeah. Something. Yeah, how do you even like think of the balance between because you do a lot of remixes and your original? Do you have like problems, like yeah, you know I mean, mean like the ratio like, or something? The remixes sound like <laughs> you always try to have a good rate. I guess you sometimes like I only do remixes now that I like absolutely love and like want to do it versus like in, you know when you're like young, like new, mm -hmm. you just do a lot of them to help get exposure. Yeah. Now it's like I only pick what I like. I do like Rufus or something that I really want to dig into. Yeah. And the remixes, like, you put in a lot of time on them, but nowhere near the amount of, like, time that I do for, like, originals and sitting yeah. there and going, like, okay, like, let's, can we get a real guitar? Like, let's record this. And you sit on it for, like, a couple weeks. And you're, yeah. like, like, it's a whole process. And then you're, like, okay, like, I want to help design the art. I'm, like, what is this going to look like? How are we going to do it? the music video gonna be like and like yeah. it just becomes this whole image uh and you like pretty much like whatever you want to create this whole thing was it difficult because you started off doing a lot of remixes and tra just transitioning into like original stuff do you have difficulties like 
knowing how to do like sessions with like a singer or something or like songwriting it's always it's always different um with each individual because uh, even collabs too like you forget that someone else is there sometimes mm. and you can get caught up and like hey man let me do some work you know yeah. like i like so it's like it has to be a mutual thing but then also the, there's a lot of pressure to sit down in a room yeah. with somebody and it's good to not um not like put <laughs> these like constraints on yourself mm. like oh you have to create a hit oh you have to like, get something done the first day a lot of like the first time you like meet with somebody or have a session you kind of just like go get food and hang out and talk and like laugh and then like you come up with these ideas and that and like you start something and that kind of spawns and you get back and the second time you sit in like the session with somebody or somebody that you know too mm -hmm. like me and Kalina have just like have built this relationship over the years so like you sit down and you're comfortable yeah and that's like really really important mm -hmm. what would you say would be your biggest struggles in your career so, so far um, it, right now, I guess the hardest part is like the balance of the touring and mm. creating music because like you'll go and be gone for five days and come back for three and you're like, oh, I just want to sleep and then yeah. I want to work with music. <laughs> you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go visit my girl or like I'm going to do this and you have to like kind of like find a good balance of making music and touring and making sure you don't burn yourself out. Yeah. And how, have you always, you were into like a graffiti or like photography? I love, yeah, I love street art. Like, how do you get, how did you get into street art? Um, whew, it's probably that Banksy documentary like 10 years ago. <laughs> like, was it through, through, exit through the gift shop? Mm. And I was like, this is like the coolest shit ever. And then, um, the, the, like, if you look at like Melrose or anywhere, because like my family's from San Francisco, there's so much of it everywhere. And I just think it's like the coolest shit ever, because like, I, I I always wanted to get into art, and I always wish I could paint, but I, I suck horribly. <laughs> it's not as bad as my singing. But, oh my god, no! <laughs> but uh, I, it's like it was like the cool way to like you know like art. It made it made art cool for me, I guess. Yeah. Have you tried yourself? Like I haven't. Graffiti? I'm like a little like I need to get a studio or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> I can just see myself spray painting the wall in yeah, my apartment, that'd or be like so cool. the fumes, or like. Uh, like, it would be tight to, like, make a stencil or, yeah. you know, like, stuff like that. Do you actually still do a lot of videos, like, in your free time now? Since no, I mean, I haven't got back into it. It's actually, like, pretty amazing. It amazes me, like, how fast, like, technology has changed mm. from, like, it was, like, Firewire, Mini DV, to then everything's, like, HD, Mini HD, and then now it's, like, all digital and you don't even need tape you know and it's just excelled so fast that i don't even know where i would begin <laughs> I, I i took too much of a break i would yeah. have to like okay uh, do i know how to use funnel cut anymore like what camera do you get or you know what i mean how do you think you've grown like personally since you started um i've grown personally i don't think much has changed uh i feel like i'm just like the same person mm -hmm. and like i'm just kind of getting to do what I want and yeah. like not having to work at the cat. <laughs> like, oh my like God. I don't have to do work a day job. So I'm, I'm really happy and, um, you know, I want to continue to grow and um, take this thing to the next level. Yeah. yeah. Last question. Okay. What do you want to be remembered for? I'd say the impact on people and uh, always a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, you you smell so much. I, 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 I. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely. Bye. Bye guys.